Hey, Rhonda, are you there? Yes, I am. Good morning, Donna. Hi, good morning. How are you today? <laughs> Virtual hugs. I know, I know. I, I feel I feel so uh, disconnected. So this is my my way of reaching out to people and um, just so people know that like, you and I are in uh, leadership Wilkes-Barre together this year and we've been distanced for, you know, weeks. Yeah, we didn't meet this month? this month. We're gonna meet next month, so we won't see each other for a while. And um, but anyway, we've come to know each other through that organization, and uh, and so I'm doing these videos just to kind of reach out to friends uh, that we know and acquaintances in the area, and just kind of see how you're dealing with this whole shutdown thing and being isolated. And uh, I just want people to kind of hear your take on it because a lot of people we've been having on are either business owners or customers and your perspective is a little bit unique because you are in higher education. Mm -hmm. So if you wouldn't mind just letting people kind of know, uh, you know, who you are and, and, uh, and where you're working and, and tell us a little bit about how you've had to kind of pivot a little bit to mm. get, get that job done. Okay. Well, thank you, Donna. So I'm Rhonda Rabbit, Dean for the School of Education here at Wilkes University in Wilkes-Barre. And I thank you for challenging me to do this because this is something that I'm really not comfortable with is putting myself out there. But yet I know as a leader, this is part of my role. And actually, one of the things that I have been thinking about myself is putting myself out there as a means of support, modeling and assistance to women wow. in general at this time. Um, whether that be a mother at home, a working mom at home, or just a, a person who is in need of talking to somebody. Um, oh, so that is, that, is, that is another side of me. And I have right been now. thinking about offering something like that. So maybe this is a, a venue for that. But today, I'm here to talk about higher education. And when you said a pivot, oh my goodness, it was not a pivot. It was a <laughs> huge, huge pivot. And Anybody in the country who would have said, oh, higher ed has to go online, completely online in two weeks, I mean, people would have said, well, that can't be done. And the fact that it has nationwide occurred, mm. unbelievable. So we, we always, always underestimate capacity. Right. Are, are you seeing, uh, are, you know, as far as your student base goes, are, are you retaining the numbers? in your online uh, objectives as you would normally see in, in the classroom? Yeah, so I, I would say, so right now we've been very fortunate and this is where I'm really grateful. I chose to come to Wilkes University partly because of their focus on students and relationships. So that in all of my upper level conversations at the campus, I have been so impressed and validated that that is indeed a truth statement at Wilkes. It's not just a, a values word on the wall. Mm -hmm. is whenever we meet and talk about what we need to do as an institution, it's always about caring for the students. And we have had a number of students, I will be honest, reach out um, because of needing some mental health support. And here's the sad reality, and again, another reason why I chose to come to Wilkes, is there's a lot of students in our area who use coming to Wilkes University as a means to improve themselves, as a way to get out of situations at home, so to have to be forced to go back home now and then to try this new medium of learning online, it's a serious challenge for them. So we are offering virtual mental health support to some of our students in that regard. So that, that's a reality. That's a big need, right? And, and so, so students of Wilkes can get that support from you. How, how do they go about getting that? Um, we have uh, phone calls online. We have a, a student support center that is specific for mental health. Mm -hmm. um, we have psychologists, counselors, and then we have University College of Advisors also. So depending upon what the actual need is, they're there. But I would say the other piece that I'm really proud of in the School of Education in particular is the relationship of our faculty with students. So um, in our graduate level, we already were online. So this was an easy, easy step because it was no change in business. Our challenge there has been supporting teachers and administrators who have had to go online themselves. So they're in our class online, but now they have to change their day world. Um, right. So the undergrad students, uh, I think the, the faculty have made the shift to online, knowing that it's not best practice, but they've made the shift. And we are doing like Zoom 
so that they can keep that relationship and they're checking in either individually with their students or as a whole. So the first step is always the faculty. And have you all uh, decided about graduation mm. ceremonies? I see a lot of, I think it's high schools are either doing it virtually, or I think I saw one this morning, they're doing it at a, at a drive-in. Hanover School District, I know I am just so excited about that. I love the fact that there's a drive-in theater that's still in existence in the country, but it's like, see, we yeah. need those. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. And so, so what is uh, Wilk's perspective? How are they gonna approach graduation this year? So we have committed, we are com completing the semester as normal, as scheduled on time. So the diplomas for the May graduation will still read the May date. However, we can't come together to celebrate, but the president has committed at some point in time in the future, we are all gonna come together and we will have that big celebration. So whether that's in the summer for a special event or maybe adding it on to the August ceremony that we traditionally have, but we will have that pomp and circumstance as he calls it. It's important for it's important for graduates, right? They worked hard to get to that point. Yes. You know, part of our conversation we had a little bit earlier uh, was, you know, we were talking about that we're all uh, we're all in this situation right now where we're sitting in these four walls trying to figure out what the new norm looks like, right? When when eleventh element opens back up, what's it gonna look like? When Wilkes University opens up again for summer semester uh, or the fall semester, what is that going to be? Mm -hmm. We talked about how important it is for right, like this is the important work now. Now's not the time to sit around and, and you know, sulk and, and really kind of ponder all of the things that are going wrong. Now's the time to lay that foundation for when things are ready to go back to whatever this new normal is, right? And, and so what have you seen as far as preparation goes uh, on your end? And, and uh, why do you think that that's so important right now? So I have a, a term, I don't remember, I should cite the author because I read it in a book somewhere some time ago, but it's become a favorite word of mine. It's probability. So we have a problem, but I see this as an opportunity. Right. 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 So, and that's how you can approach everything that you encounter in your life path, right? Is this a problem or is this an opportunity? Well, it all depends upon how you look at it. One of the things in the School of Ed that we had talked about is we have been talking about doing things differently for a while. We have been talking about, we need to think differently because we're not preparing for the future. We're, we're still stuck in the current day and we should be preparing for future. So I feel that we've already been engaging in that conversation. And I remember at a, an administrative meeting one time, somebody said, well, we can't predict what the future of higher education is. And I challenged that and I said, no, we are co-creating that. Everything that we do is setting up for the future. So to your point right now, you're absolutely right. Like I said earlier, we're going to hit, when we come back, we're gonna be at the intersection. And depending upon what people have been doing in this new norm, this boring time of being stuck at home, right. will determine if they survive moving forward, if they actually die off because they weren't using this time for something new, or they're going to thrive because like you, you're, you're already doing things differently. You're planning and, and striving to imagine what that next norm is going to be. Right. Because I think we can all agree on one thing. It's not going to be the same. Exactly. Nothing ever goes back. That's it, right. It's the new norm. That's right. And, and hopefully it's, it's a positive for all of us. And, uh, and I think there is opportunity. They always, you know, good things always come, like you said, from this. Maybe it's because we have time to sit and think about what we can do differently or what we can improve on, right? Yeah, so from a higher ed perspective, the number one resistance to anything moving forward innovatively has always been the face-to-face -face versus online teaching. And I have to confess, as an educator myself, when we started online, you know, a couple decades ago, I was resistant because I thought a learning process is very personal. I have to be with you for teaching and learning to really occur. And it was the doctoral program at Wilkes University in the School of Education that really opened my mind and expanded my excitement about online teaching and learning because they were doing this. They were developing relationships. They were having face-to-face -face conversations. So they were online, they were distance, but they were still keeping relationships and students first. So that's when I realized, okay, this is the new norm. This is where it's going. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of faculty who don't see that. They think, well, I lecture, 
So then they video record a lecture and post that online. That, that's not a best practice of teaching and learning online. That's not what it should be. And so I think higher ed institutions are going to find themselves determining their future on if they are going to use this as becoming a new norm and bringing more online learning into their institutions. Right, and I think the, the, uh, the students coming in, you know, this is what would they grew up on. They grew up on something digital in, in this platform. And we all just kind of have, we're gonna have to get learned to that. We have to learn to accept that. And that's kind of the way, you know, things, things are going, like you say meetings are going that way. And even big corporations are going instead of they're saving money, right? They're not traveling to do all of these meetings. Now everybody's just hopping on their computer and, and making some progress, you know? And, and I think that's really the way. And, and uh, the sooner we all do that, I think, the easier it's going to be. And there's gonna be bumps in the road. And here's the thing, when we're doing these videos, I say everything, it's not perfection, it's progress. And that's how you have to kind of look at it. See, and that's the other thing. So letting go of your own fear and insecurities, right? So this is what we have, this is good for now because this is all I can do. We beat ourselves up too much, yes. Amen, and we can stop mm. on it, you're right, that's it. So another phrase you remind me of is both and because I don't know about you, but so I love this venue. And um, I've actually learned a lot about my staff people because I now have weekly staff meetings where I sit and see everybody. I get to learn more about their personal life because they're in homes versus I would tend to just see my immediate staff on a regular basis. So it, it actually has brought me closer to the whole school in that regard. But yet, like you probably, my butt is sore. Yes. I, I, and I, <laughs> I used to actually enjoy running from meeting to meeting, and now I just sit in the same spot and I hardly have time to go take a bathroom break. So there is a, a limit, right? So we need both this and we still need some other activity. So that's right, get out and take a walk or something. But well, Rhonda, this has been awesome. And, and uh, I, I enjoy talking to you. I look forward to when we can physically see each other again and, and continue to be productive. Is there any other kind of last minute thoughts of kind of inspiration that you maybe want to share that you're utilizing in, you know, in your daily routine? So I, I think that going back to the fear and, and self-criticism and the unknown. So in, in my camp, we've said, okay, well, we know for sure we're going to be in this situation through May. So let's work with this. Let's imagine and dream for the future, but we can't wallow in like, oh, what if this or what if that? Because once you start that negative storytelling, mm -hmm. it takes you down. So again, just working with what you have, being content with that and trusting, just trusting. That's right. That's great. And that's all we can do. Yes. Well, well Rana, I, I enjoy it. We're not so alone. We're not alone. That's the biggest thing, right? We feel like we're alone because we're isolated, but we're all in this together. Oh, that's right. we'll give, give you a virtual high five, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Rana, and, and good luck uh, continuing all of your online uh, higher education stuff with Wilkes. And then uh, I look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you, Donna. Have a great Thank day. You. you too.